G'day everybody. Today's video is going to be a walkthrough of the Fusion 19 and a review. But first, we've got a little bit of fishing to do. G'day. My name is Luke and this is my wife Jen. And here are our two growing boys, Liam and Elliot. We've been fishing, boating and exploring the pristine waters of the Fraser Coast for about 10 years now. So subscribe and come join the adventure. Slightly challenging conditions today. Oh, that wind's picked up early. And this fish does not want to come to the boat. I got the top of the wind's pushing me that way. The fish is going that way. Trevally-ish. This is why when people say 15 knots and above out in the bay, when it picks up, it's not, um, it's not ridiculous. It's just really uncomfortable because it turns into a bit of a, a bit of a washing machine. And there's, just come at you from a couple of different angles and short waves short gaps but deep I'll be happy if I get this guy up because it's on a lure that I haven't used before and I am a little bit I'm really testing the trebles I'm a little bit worried about the trebles colour now so at least I could see him ah. bit golden I think yep bit golden so that's it there guys beautiful fish Harvey Bay Golden for Valley a lot of people come a long way to catch these guys. Sorry about the wind if you can't hear me. It's blowing a little bit. I really shouldn't be out here now. I'll get this guy back and then I'm gonna uh, head home. G'day folks. Sorry if there's a bit of wind uh, in the mic. The wind has really picked up. I thought I'd come out for an early morning fish on, it's Friday before a weekend and the weather prediction this weekend is not good. Um, the wind today was meant to sort of ease into the weekend, if you know what I mean, and slowly pick up. Well, it's actually picked up quite quickly. So I'm about to do a run back. Now, I've been meaning to do a review video of the Fusion 19, and I was gonna do, try and do a bit of a walkthrough in the shed, show you all the features of the boat. Um, it's gonna be done in a way that I always do my reviews. I, obviously I like the boat because I bought one, all right? So straight off the cuff, you know I like it. Um, but I'll explain why, and I'm just gonna give you the no nonsense sort of opinion about it and try and keep it as unbiased as I can. You know I like it, all right? So, but I will pick on a few things to do with it. Um, but I thought, given the conditions, uh, we're out, probably about 10 mile off of Fraser Island, okay? Uh, that wind's picking up to about 15, gusting to 20. Um, and the bay just turns into a washing machine. So I'm gonna sh turn the cameras on on the way back. The cameras never do everything justice. Uh, they don't show you the depths in between the chop, all that sort of stuff. 
but I'll get some footage to try and show you how it rides um, in these conditions. It is a very dry center console. Now every open boat, every center console will get water in it because of sea spray and stuff like that. But this boat has a funny knack of being drier than most, uh, which is a great feature of it. There is one thing I do want to show you before we make the run back. Apologies for the wind again. This boat is a wet deck boat, okay? There's no bilge pump in this boat. It's all rot proof. Nothing will rot in the hull. Um, and it's all designed with a gutter system and an open deck so that the water just rushes straight out the back through these holes. And a lot of people, the first thing that Aussie boaters say when they see this boat is, oh, that transom's awfully low. Hmm, I don't know if I like the look of that. The idea is, is in South Africa, they've learned not to trust electrical safety devices like bilge pumps, okay? So if you cop a huge wave over your boat and it gets into your batteries, or your electronics and that, boom, bilge pump's gone. Okay, the only option you got then is to get the bucket out and start bailing. The idea behind this is you can take a huge wave over the side or a lot of water, okay, and she'll just flush straight out the back. In the first instance, straight through those holes, you can see the water coming in. It's because I've got, I've deliberately got the transom pointed into the swell, all right? So it can go straight out, any excess water at the height of that transom will go straight off the back and then out those holes. And in all the hatches, in all the hatches there's a guttering system that allows everything to get out as well. So that's one of the huge, I really like that safety aspect of this boat, okay? It's unsinkable like a lot of boats on the market because it's full of foam, all that sort of stuff. So the hull will not sink. It can get full of water like any boat and it doesn't rely on a bilge system to get that water out. It's got an open deck to allow that all to happen, okay? Some people say, oh, when you're backing up on a big fish or something like that, you're just going to cop water over the top. You may do, but it goes straight out, okay? It's not like it comes and stays in the boat. You're not walking around ankle deep. It just goes straight out. Why is it when the big waves go away when I start talking? I was hoping to show you how quickly the water gets out. There's one coming now. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get a bit of water in here. The furthest I've seen the water come in over the back is up to the base of the esky. Okay? Let's see if this one puts a bit of water in us. Now we're turning! Yeah, I'll back us up. There we go. Deliberately backing us up. There you go. And all that water, so it's come up level with the esky, and it's all just draining out. So I don't really see an issue with it, all right? Um, I certainly don't like relying purely on a bilge pump to get the water out, all right? Um, I think this is actually a really good system. Okay, so I'm going a bit slow now. I'm trying to dip the nose into these troughs for you, okay? To show you if water comes over the front. Here's a good one here. I'll slow her right down and deliberately put the nose in. Oh, down she goes. And you can see, look at that. Oh! have to try hard to get water to come over the bow of this boat. And that water, once it's in, let's put it in. Nah. Okay, it's very, very buoyant on the bow. Whew. So the, the whole boat is very, very buoyant, okay? And you can see I had to try really hard to dig that in to get water to come over the bow of the boat. Okay. I'm gonna make the run back. Plenty of opportunity here to get very wet. 
Let's see how she performs. Sorry about the wind, eh? I'll try and stay behind the console. Folks, the fishing is over. I hope you have a good appreciation now for how this boat performs in testing conditions. You would have noticed I had to try really hard to get the bow of this boat to duck into the wave to get water on. And I also had to try pretty hard to get water to come over the transom as well. It's very hard for me to get footage, running footage of the boat when I'm out by myself like that. But if you go and check out the Fusion Power Boats Australia Facebook page or the Fusion Power Boats website. There is absolutely bucket loads of footage on there of the 17, the 21 and the 19 footers moving around in various conditions on still water, through the swell on beaches and all that sort of stuff. So if that's what you want to look at, go and have a look at that. Now, what I want to concentrate on now is the key considerations for why we decided to purchase this particular boat over a range of other boats that we were looking at at the time. And I also want to concentrate really hard today on what's underneath the hull, all right? Too many reviews, in my opinion, concentrate on all the bling that's in these things. All right, sounders, electric motors, motors, all that sort of stuff, cup holders even, seem to get the spotlight in a lot of reviews. Try and ignore all that marketing hype, okay? It is the hull and the motor that are gonna get you and your family home safely. So today I really wanna spend a lot of time talking about the hull of this boat. It is a huge reason why we decided to purchase it. As mentioned, this is the Fusion 19 out of Fusion Power Boats out of South Africa. It is a variable V hull designed boat. Now there are three key things about the design of this hull, which I think are really, really important. Now this is really hard to show on the camera, but it has a very steep dead rise at the bow of the boat. That's the angle right at the front of the boat. And this is important because it's that angle that allows the hull of the boat to cut through chop and waves. Plus, the hull also has a very wide reverse chime running the length of the boat. That's this part here all the way through, all right? Now, what that's good for is when the boat's at rest, it offers stability, okay, because it's a flatter surface offering the stability in the waves and things. But also, when it's moving through chop and swell, and you would have seen this in the earlier footage, when the boat's coming down and hitting the waves, it forces the spray out wider, further away from the hull, so that you don't get that sea spray coming back across the open boat, like all open boats sort of get, okay? Plus, it has a flared freeboard, okay, up along here. The freeboard is flared, especially up along the bow of this boat. Again, offering more protection from that spray as it's pushed away from the boat. The flared freeboard at the bow of this boat, plus the reverse chime and the buoyancy of this boat, overall what it does is it helps prevent the bow of the boat digging into waves. And that's why you would have seen in the footage today, I had to work so hard, I basically had to run the boat up and then almost put it into reverse to get the nose to go where it didn't want to go straight into the trough of those waves to get water to come over the front. This boat naturally just wants to sit on top of the waves. The hull also has a couple of sneaky little tricks in it as well. It has a reverse hook built in underneath in the hull. What that means is it provides greater lift 
for the boat when you're coming out of the hull and onto the plane. You get onto the plane very quickly in this hull, which is a great feature. The boat also has a 15 degree transom. What that means is it offers you more negative trim for your motor position. The biggest consideration for me personally was fishing, all right? I am a predominantly a lure fisherman. I love getting up on the flats of Fraser Island, so right up into very shallow water. This boat will float in 30, 35 centimeters of water, so it suited my style of fishing on the flats. I also wanted to be able to go out and hit the local reefs around Harvey Bay, um, and I wanted to be able to push wider into Platypus Bay um, and head right out into the center of it, even when the conditions were quite testing, and that's what you saw at the start of this video. So I wanted to be able to do all of that style of fishing out of the one boat. That was really, really important for me. I love having a casting deck up the front. This configuration is the configuration that I mostly use now. I don't actually have the casting de deck in here too much. This configuration seems to suit what I'm doing most days really, really well. If I am gonna have a dedicated flat session right up on shallow water, I do put the casting deck in because I'm gonna spend so much time up there. Ah. Oh. The other consideration was family activities. Now we had a 440 Quintrex Renegade. Put simply, that boat was brilliant, but I've got two growing boys, they're gonna be teenagers soon, and it just got too small for us. So we wanted a boat that had more room, more storage for taking out more things, okay? A lot of cooking gear, towels, clothes, all that sort of stuff. It all soon adds up and takes up lots of room in the boat. So we wanted a good family all-rounder. Um, we wanted a comfortable ride and a safe ride. And that leads to the third consideration, safety. That was a massive thing for my wife, Jen. It, it, it is for me as well, behind fishing, I guess. But safety is a huge thing. Jen is not a confident swimmer. The boys are still learning, not to how to swim, but how to handle themselves in rougher conditions. It's very different learning to swim in a pool and then all of a sudden being thrust into the ocean. Okay, so we wanted to make sure that the vessel was very, very safe. Yeah, we're a lie, we and it's the same for all of us, price point. I wanted value for money, um, and this isn't an imported boat from South Africa, and the price does fluctuate depending on the exchange rate between the Aussie dollar and South African Rand, I think it is. Um, so price point was a, a big thing. Um, and when, when I was talking previously about all the bling on boats and things, they come with a price tag as well, all right? So what you'll notice about this boat is it's very much in an American bay boat style, but minus the bling, okay? So that helps with the price point. Radio. Now I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of all the hatches and all that sort of stuff. Radio. So here we are at the transom area of the boat. Now you'll notice there are two hatches left and right. Um, hatch over there, hatch there. I'll open them up and show you, but essentially that one there is the live bait hatches. well. I've just got fenders and ropes in there at the moment. That's the live bait well. Uh, fuel filter, cabling running to the motor. That's the trench running to the center console and to the bow of the boat and the pump, which I've got down here, the pump for the deck wash and the live bait well and everything is located in there. Uh, deck wash on the side of the boat, okay, that's the, uh, the deck wash is located in there. We also have the optional ski pole fitted uh, to this boat. Now, the Fusion power boats, they can come set up to run a single motor or a set of twins, all right? Um, and they'll just design the transom slightly differently. There's just uh, more room to mount twin motors and the ski pole, which is an option, uh, is slightly wider and a different shape if you have twins mounted. Now, why did we go for the ski pole? We don't do a lot of skiing. We don't uh, do a lot of tubing. We might do in the future. So that's one of the reasons we got it. The second reason I got it is I like the ability to 
attach things to it. You can put a bait board on it, put all your storage for your plies and stuff, rod holders, all that sort of stuff, cameras and things like that. I just find it really, really handy. Okay, so we we went with the Esky option for the under seat box. I think it's about a 60 or an 80 litre Esky. Uh, fiberglass, good quality. It's got um, a couple of Teflon slides, so it just uh, slides out once you undo that. The other option is that you don't have the Esky and you just have this as a storage box, which is accessed um, under the seat. The seat just lifts up, providing access to that box. Okay, so rear hatch. All right, um, now you can flood this rear hatch for wakeboarding, um, providing a little bit more drop in the uh, back end of the boat to produce a bit more wake behind it for wakeboarding. Um, I use it mostly Other for storage. I've also filled it with ice and put fish in there. Uh, works perfectly fine. Down inside underneath there is the tap for the salt water to come through to the deck wash and also to the live bait well. Uh, so that's accessed underneath there. You'll notice around the edges, uh, all the guttering system. Um, so all the hatches have a guttering system in them. Uh, they're all linked together so that any water that comes in the side of the hatches uh, goes into that guttering system and doesn't end up in your hatches. Folding back seat, uh, you just lift it up, move it back and forth and drop it into the slots that you want. So you can have it while you're sitting or you can have it in a standing position. Um, that's how I set it up when I'm standing. All right, and then you can have a couple of people sitting facing backwards. So you can use it. You can use it either okay, way. So here's the console. It is very wide. Having said that, however, there are a couple of little sneaky bits about it which you need to watch out for. You'll notice this is the Solix 12. I've got it mounted on the bracket. The reason for that is this part here, it's actually angled in, then straight and then angled out. Now, one of the other boats has uh, two nine inch sounders fitted and then their controls in the middle um, and they fit flush mounted quite well. But once you go above that nine inches, uh, you simply don't have room to flush mount. You have to go onto a bracket. Um, not a biggie for me, but some people might find that a biggie. Uh, glove box, really deep little glove box on the right hand side. Um, and this is just the way I've laid my console out. Okay, the lighting is not the best and getting the angle for the camera is not the best. But this is... The underneath the steering wheel, the hatch that gives you access to all your electrical componentry. I've got two 140 amp hour deep cycle batteries on the left to uh, hook together for 24 volts for the electric motor. And then the cranking battery on the right could easily fit another 12 volt uh, battery in right, there. This is the front of the console. You've got the seat here. Uh, easily fit two people sitting side by side. Jen and Liam sit there quite a lot. I'll just lift the lid up. Okay, plenty of storage underneath. It's not insulated, um, but no water ever gets in there for us. We've got a full of life jackets and safety gear and fire extinguishers and stuff. Then, uh, this hatch here, this is my tackle box. Okay, um, it's about down that way. It's about four more trays underneath there as well. So you can easily fit, oh, I don't know, 10... 12, 14 tackle trays in there. Uh, absolute heaps of room. And you can also, up the top there, you can get into some of the other electrical components and stuff like that as well. Rightio, you would have seen earlier in the video the folding T-top design. Um, folding it up and down is really, really simple. Uh, there's a bolt either side. Undo those bolts, that releases it. Okay, you then fold it forward, undo the struts, and then uh, fold the actual, the top of the T-top, the which is made of fiberglass, it's a hard T-top, uh, folds down on itself into the uh, bow of the boat. It is a little heavy. I know they're working on a slightly lighter option and they've also improved the struts. The struts originally when they came out were um, stainless steel tubing with rail blazer mounts at either end. It was really good because you could just clip them in, clip them out. But over time, just vibration, 
being out in the weather and things, some of those railblazer mounts started to have issues. So they've replaced them now uh, free of charge, no cost to me, with um, complete stainless steel uh, fittings. Um, this is all powder coated, obviously, but it's all stainless steel tubing and everything. Okay, I'm gonna show you the hatch up the bow. Um, this thing is massive. If Elliot was here, I'd get him to uh, <laughs> jump in and show you. It actually goes back that way. I'll, uh, it goes back that way. I'll use the net to show you. So, it's the net there. It goes all the way back that far again. So another, another half that landing net all the way back. Uh, very deep channeling system again, uh, and a drain internally as well. So you can fill it up with ice, um, whatever you want to do to store longer fish species and things. Okay, so we'll get to the rod lockers now. So there's one on either side. Now I know this is a source of discussion. So, uh, oh, okay. So we've got the gas struts. <laughs> Got the gas struts holding it up. All right. Um, there's nothing in there. They're just the, the mold underneath. You can fit a seven foot fishing rod all the way through. All right. Now, I usually, I put some matting in here just to stop the reels from bouncing around. And I am a bit later on, further up that way, right up the end there, I'm going to put some tubes in. Uh, I'm going to get some foam cut to that shape, put some tubes in there just to stop the rod tips from tangling up. But I can safely carry, I usually have four on either side, but I have had in this one up to eight rods alone. This area here is hollow underneath, okay, until you get down to the deck, and then it's foam filled underneath. So that space up there is empty, and I know on Peter Fry's 21, they're going to put a hatch here to make use of that space uh, forward there. They've actually... Uh, change there slightly the way they've got it set up with their rods and everything. Okay, so we've got the casting deck up onto here. We've got the anchor well. Uh, huge anchor well located here. All right, and then this part, this is going to be the hard part to show you. Okay, on that side, you'll see that tube. That runs to the center console of the boat allowing your cabling to come through. So I've got the power and the lift cable for the electric motor and the hummingbird and everything. And then on this side, there's another one. That runs all the way down to the hatch at the back of the boat. Okay, folks, I'm all done. I hope this hasn't gone too long for you. Uh, I've tried to cram a fair bit into this video. I didn't want to spend too much time walking around the inside of my boat uh, because there are so many options and you can see all of those options on the Fusion Power Boats website. Uh, there's so many options to how you can fit these out. Um, so it's really up to your own personal choice. Best thing to do probably if you are interested in seeing how these boats ride, how they perform, get in contact with Fusion Power Boats Australia through their Facebook page. Uh, there's a phone number on there as well. Tell them I sent you or this is where you've seen this review and say you want to go for a demo or something like that and they'll try and organise one for you. You really do have to ride this boat to understand uh, one of those key considerations of why we purchased it, uh, which is what we did. We went down to the Gold Coast, went for a demo and Jen pretty much straight away said yes. So it was good for me. <laughs> All right. Um, next week, what is coming up next week? To be honest, I have no idea because we haven't made the video yet. Uh, we've had so much on, we haven't been out in the water that much, but I reckon it's going to involve a little bit of this. Oh. Probably a bit more of this. Ooh. And we'll probably finish it off with some more of this. <laughs> <laughs>